I believe in heaven that they have an atmosphere of praise and I don't believe his church should be any different. I don't believe his church should be any different. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Well, it is sure good to have every one of you here right now. I'm sure glad to see once again Carly and Brian here bringing this little baby. Praise God. Amen. Good to see Bubba and Ken back here together. Praise the Lord. Still moving forward and believing God. Amen. Amen. Good to have a brother, brother Jay and his sister, right? No, that's not her sister. Praise <laughs> Go ahead and Molly over there. Amen. Amen. Good to have you, Sister Brenda. Praise the Lord. Yeah, like I said, I mean, you miss one day, just so you know. Or yeah, I want you to know that we love you and we appreciate you. And if it was two days, I'm coming after you. Just so you know. <laughs> Man, almost. Praise the Lord. Amen. I know you've been dealing with some issues as well. How many of you happy to be in the house of God? Praise the Lord. I am too. We have uh, Sister Iris here and her family. Praise the Lord of glory. Amen. Let's give her a hand clap of praise. For her. Amen. Amen. We have Gina's mama here too as well. Good to have you, Gina's mama. Amen. And sister over here. Just looking forward to see what God is going to do. Praise the Lord. So many other people I see here. And I just want God to go ahead and just bless you all the way through. Amen. I want God to bless you. I want God to help you and give you strength. How many of you know he's able to do so? How many of you know that he's able? I know that he is. I have just a few announcements I want to go ahead and make here. Today, after service, I want you all please to remain because we're going to have a baby dedication. And what a blessing it is because not only is it my first baby dedication here in Moorhaven Church of God, but it's also my granddaughter. Praise the Lord of glory. And I'm glad and privileged about that because I, I do know that her parents have been just raising her up thus far in the way that she should go. But I'm also just, I'm, I'm excited because if you think about it, that's the, the Lord telling his church that, hey, I'm not done yet. Every time these babies come out, brother, brother, amen, you understand that he's not done with the work. And I thank God for that. I thank God for his grace and his mercy. And I do believe he's going to continue to help us understand that more and more. Amen. How many of you believe that? I do. Amen. I do. So please, I want you all to stick around for that after, after service. And I just want God to have his way. Amen. Amen. I'm going to speak from the heart. And there's a few scriptures I want to read. But we're going to just, basically what we're going to do is we're going to give this baby back to God in a sense of, hey, we're still going to hold on to our responsibility. I'm raising them up, but the bottom line is these children are his. And we just want to be able to do that here. So please, if you will, stay after service, and we're going to give, we'll dedicate this baby to the Lord. Also, next week, next Sunday, is our friend day. Is our friend day. So I encourage you, please, to invite, 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 invite a friend. Invite two friends, invite three friends, if you will. But just it, even if nobody comes, you make sure you're here. And we're going to worship the Lord, but also I want an opportunity to minister unto the friends. And we're going to have dinner on the ground after that. Brother Waldo, we're going to sit down and eat and just enjoy a time of fellowship. But I can tell you this right now, I'm going to preach first. And then, praise God, we're going to enjoy a time of fellowship. Amen. Amen. So uh, that Sunday night, we will not be having uh, the normal uh, worship service. We're going to be having prayer meeting from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Okay, so if you normally come Sunday night, just know we're going to come in and, and some nice music's going to be playing. And I want you just to find a place around these altars. And the reason why I'm saying that is I can tell that God is already moving on behalf of your prayer request. But he's also moving in the spiritual as well. Sister Lena, there's things that are going on that I know without a shadow of a doubt are because of those who are believing the Lord. And are seeking his face. How many of you have family members that are not saved? If you do, I encourage you to be here in this prayer meeting. How many of you have those that are sick in body? I encourage you to be here in this prayer meeting. All those that are just needing a spiritual breakthrough, I encourage you to be here in this prayer meeting. Because every time in the Bible I see the people of God gather together, I see miracles happen. I see, I see all of heaven being shaken, but the gates of hell will not prevail against the people of God who believe them. You must understand that when the people of God are gathered together in his name, in one mind, in one accord, what is that saying? You're pushing against the wall. And we're pushing together. 
And we're believing God is going to prevail. I don't know about you, but I read the back of the book. And Sister Brenda, I know we already win. Hallelujah. I know we make it all the way through. And I believe that we're going to make it. So I just want to make it together. Praise the Lord. I want to encourage you all to be a part of that next week. And I have a few requests, but I'm not going to, con or a few more announcements. I'm not going to go into that. 430, we're going to go ahead. If everybody's up for it, we're going to go ahead and have a, a worship service. Uh, practice okay so 4 30 here today if you're a part of this worship team be here and there's a few songs we want to go over and uh we want to just get in the same tune the same key pastor Corey's not going to lead it because i sing in one key and that's bullfrog bottom line <laughs> and if you had me up here singing and leading all you would sound like a bunch of bullfrogs out there but we're not going to do that but i thank god for the talent that we have here and the way god is blessing us so at 4 30 and i know we have a few things planned afterwards but we'll just we'll work it out and let the lord lead us in that way if you have a prayer request i want to see your hand go up right now you've been praying about some things and desperately needing god to bless and help let me see your hand put it up right now and say god it's me it's me i'm needing god to bless and to help and i do know right now that he is able if the Lord has ever answered a prayer of yours, let me see your hand go up right now. Oh, thank you, Lord. If he's answered more than five prayers, and you can go ahead and count them, let me see your hand go up again. Oh, praise the Lord. Let me go ahead and go out there a little bit. If you know the Lord has answered more than ten prayers of yours, let's go ahead and put your hand up. Oh, hallelujah. Why are we praying then, Pastor? Because we are serving a God who answers prayers. We're serving a God who is able. If you're struggling right now in your body, I want you to go ahead and stand up right now in the name of Jesus. You need God to touch your body right now. Stand up and that's you. Oh, I see that. Okay, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, I want you to know if somebody's struggling financially, I want you to go ahead and stand up right now and ask God to bless you. You can go ahead and just be honest about it. You just need some help right now. Not going into detail, but just need help. If that's you, stand up right now in the name of Jesus. Okay, if you've got some spiritual battles that you're dealing with and you need God to intervene, go ahead and stand up right now. You've got some things going on and you need God just to just bring that light of who he is into that situation. Stand up. Oh, I'm glad that's you right now. You know what? I want to go ahead and I want to ask this right now. That if you are in a place where you're questioning God and you're saying, Lord, I've been praying about this, but it hasn't come through, Lord. And I'm just wondering where you would have me. What would you have me to do? And I'm going to go ahead and go out on the limb and just by faith, if that's you, I want you to go ahead and stand up right now. I want you to stand up and say, God, that's me. I've been struggling right now. I've got a particular answer that I need. I haven't heard from you, God, but I need you to answer right now. If that's you, stand up. Stand up. Everybody else that is sitting down, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and stand up with me. And I want you to help me pray for all these who have some physical ailments, dealing with having some spiritual battles, which should truly be every one of us, some financial needs, and those that have that question just waiting for God to answer. And you're at the end of the rope and you're saying, God, if you don't answer right now, I don't know what I'm going to do. I need to hear your voice. I want you to go ahead and pray with me. Can you do that, church? Let's pray, dear Father. We love you and we praise you and we thank you once again for bringing us here together. My Lord, I know without a shadow of a doubt that we are nothing without you. And I thank you, my God, for the grace and the mercy you have shown us. But most of all, Lord, I thank you for Jesus. I thank you for the blood of the Lamb. I thank you for the blood of that precious Lamb. And we ask you right now, God, as we've gathered here together, Lord, you know the needs in the bodies, Father. Lord, you know whatever sickness it is, diabetes, Father. Lord, the pains in the body, all the way from the top of the head to the sole of their feet. Lord, those that are dealing right now with some liver issues, Father. God, you know what it is, my Lord. And I'm asking you, Father, to meet the need in the name of Jesus. Lord, I'm asking you right now, those, Father, that are struggling spiritually and feel like, God, that there's no hope, just feel like they're, they're in a pit, Lord, and asking you to get them out, Lord. I'm asking you, Father, right now, as they lift up your hand, their hands towards you, Father, that you would reach down your hands towards them and help them to get out right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, you know who it is. You know, Father, Lord, who it is right now. Lord, I know there's others that are dealing with some financial struggles. And God, I 
know that you can meet the need because you said that you would meet that need, every need, whatever it is, Father. And it's real, dear God, as we live on this earth. We have bills to pay, responsibilities. And my Lord, sometimes the money just doesn't seem to be there. I know sometimes it's our fault, but I do know that you said it will be faithful unto you, Lord, that you would bless abundantly. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or seed begging bread. And Lord, I know you can meet whatever need is there right now in the name of Christ. Lord, I know there's that one, Father, that one right now that has that question is still waiting on the answer. I'm asking you, Father, to answer right now in the name of Jesus. Church, can you lift your hands right now with me? Lord, that one that's just asking said, God, if you don't give me an answer, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm asking you, Lord, to answer in the name of Jesus. I'm asking you, my Lord, to meet the need right now, Father. And Lord, and let it be without a shadow of a doubt that you answer, God. In the name of Jesus, my Lord, we love you, we praise you, and we thank you. My God, this service is yours. I thank you for these little children that are here. I thank you, my Lord, for these little babies. Thank you for little Bonnie. Thank you, my Lord, for bringing that little girl, God, for strengthening her, strengthening the family. Oh, thank you for little Amelia. Lord, I'm just, these little babies that you're bringing in, we praise you. We thank you, God. We thank you, my Lord. We thank you, my Father. We thank you, my Lord. We thank you for the hope, dear God, that I see in these little children's eyes. We thank you, Father, they're here to hear your word and worship you. I don't want to let them down, God. I don't want them to look at me and say, hey, why doesn't he have his hand in the air? I want to go ahead and be an example unto these children and worship as God will give me the strength to do. My Lord, we praise you and we thank you, Father. We thank you, my Lord. We thank you, my Lord. We thank you, my Lord. You're so good to us. I'm asking you, God, to meet the need in the name of Jesus. I'm asking you, my Lord, to meet the need in the name of Jesus. I know you're able, Father. I know you're able. I know your Bible says every tongue shall confess and every knee shall bow. That you are king. To the glory of the Lord, to the glory of God. And we're going to do that now, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Oh, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we do pray, God. Amen and amen. Before you're seated, go around and go ahead and introduce yourself to a few people. Let's shake a hand or two and be friendly.
love that song, Victory in Jesus. Let's see how much victory we still have. Praise the Lord. Amen. Time to go ahead and receive an offering. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let me have my ushers come forward. Come on up here, Jacob. Oh, I'm sorry. Brother Billy, you're going to pray. Amen. Come on up here, Jacob. Amen. Praise the Lord. You're going to pray for me. <laughs> Once again, give you an opportunity to give. I'm going to give you a quick testimony here. Uh, this past week, we had a, a, uh, a, a woman from the church bless us uh, and bless the youth. And gave X amount of dollars. I'm not going to tell you the amount because you might not give too much right now. But I just want to go ahead and, and tell you. <laughs> but well, what it was is they sent some cashier checks months and months ago over here to the church. And there was a one number off as far as the uh, address goes. And uh, I can almost take blame to that, but I'm not going to do that. Needless to say, when the checks came through, they were nowhere to be found. They said they were sent, but they were nowhere to be found. So long story of events happened to the post office here, there, and waited, talked about canceling the cashier checks. And so we're at the point where like, okay, well, nobody's cashed them yet, so something's going on. Well, months and months and months go by. I'm sitting here, just got off work early in the morning, come over here, ride my bike, and a man stopped me, businessman in a truck. Said, here, are you Pastor Corey? I said, hmm. <laughs> You know, sometimes I'm quick to answer when somebody asks you, you know. And I was like, yeah, I'm Pastor Corey. Here I am. And uh, they said, well, here, I want to give this to you. And I looked at it, and as soon as I read the envelope, I knew what it was. You see, it was that letter and also the blessing of God came Amen. months and months later. And he told me a story about how uh, one of his workers' friends actually found it on the side of the room. And I said, wow. I said, that's amazing. He says, yeah, we found it in LaBelle in Henry County on the side of the road. You have to understand that blessing from God was supposed to come here. And, of course, the devil said, nope, you're not getting it right now. Sent it off. But God said, no, that's their blessing. I'm going to go ahead and make sure it gets into their hands. What are you saying, Pastor? God knows what he's doing. Can you say Amen. I'm telling you, when a blessing comes, it might not come to you, you know, right when you think you need it. But I guarantee you, it will come right when God knows you need it. Can you say amen on that one? Months and months and months later, here we are. The next amount of dollars on the side of the road. And God put that man right there. you got to understand how this happened here. With all the rain that we had. Had a hurricane even come through. And here we are, this man picks an envelope and says it's addressed to Moorhaven Church of God in a different county. Ended up giving it to a friend who gave it to his boss. And his boss just happens to live over here in Glades County. And here we are right now with a blessing. What are you saying, Pastor? Hallelujah. Praise God. We couldn't come at a better time. God knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing to help with the youth. And also started here in the, the nursery. I've been with boys. I thank God for my boys. We started working on preparing the nursery. And we have it all demoed out, gutted out. And, you know, we've only been a week into it. And I've been telling everybody I'm already a month, a month and a half behind already. Just being a week into it. So with that being said, I thank everybody who's been giving like they have. And I just want you to know that the old saying goes this. He says, if you're in financial trouble, the best thing to do is just be obedient to God and hold on. And there's times where we just have to give ourselves out of it. And God will surely open up the doors. Just a real quick testimony right now. I want, it, want you all to testimony, uh, testify. If you know that God has blessed you in this financial realm, and it's because of your obedience to him, I want to see your hand go up right now. Come on, look, that's everybody in here. Just because of the obedience to God, God said, hey, here it goes. Now, I know a lot of people, they'll start saying, well, maybe that's just uh, a happenstance. That's just, God's, that's just the way it worked out. No, no, no. God knows every time. Praise the Lord. Brother Billy, stand up and please pray over this offering. Lord, we love you. Bless, bless this offering. Oh, thank you. Amen. Give as you're giving unto the Lord. Praise the Lord. I heard about a mansion. He's built for me.
been to some mercy hand to me every day. Yes. I'm blessed. I got up this morning and I got up, I woke up and had I could walk, talk, Come and see. And you know, I, and my health wise, I'm blessed that he's helped me as healthy as I am. I thank the Lord that I'm here today. I get to see my first great grandbaby's dedication. Amen. I had my mother on my heart today. Oh, yeah. And I thought my mama would be so happy to be here to right. see this. Absolutely. But you know, she's gone on. Yeah. And I thought, yeah, she's gone on and she's at rest. She's in a better place than we are. Absolutely. But you know what, Brother Corey? That's where I want to go. Oh, I want to go to that bed. Amen. 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 I, Amen. I mean, uh, why wouldn't you want to go? He's Come done on. so much for me. And, and in my life, and I, I, I struggle just like everybody else does. We're all human. We're all flesh. But you know what? It's worth it. It's worth every heartache, every trial I have to go through on heat done on the earth. I know that he's doing it for a reason and a purpose. That's right. Because you know what? It makes me stronger and build my faith in him. That I'm going to be an overcome. Come on. Amen. You know, I'm going to overcome all the heartaches, all the troubles, all the trials. But he's teaching me. Yeah. As you go on serving the Lord, I don't care how many years you serve him, he teaches you. That's right. He does That's things right. in your life you might think is bad, but there's a reason and a purpose for it. It always comes out for the better. As long as you serve him and give your life to him, yeah. no matter the finance, no matter the health, no matter what situation comes, family, problems, hey, it's worth it, brother. Right. Just get on your knees and then talk to him. You know what? It don't make no difference when you talk to him. Everything gets better. That's I, right. thank Amen. Him, I thank him for having mercy and grace on my he soul. Is. He is so good to me, Brother Corey. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Oh. Amen. She's testifying. She's a witness to what God is doing in her life. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 Brother Gene, bless him. Bless him. Perfect is the home. It won't be long now before we go home, people. I believe with all my heart about life and see the signs of the time. And anybody that's a Christian can see the signs of the time. That's right. How things are shaping up. Amen. For the Lord to come back. And I'm and I want to sing this song today for the glory of God. This is what heaven means to be. Amen. You praise God if you love the Lord. Amen. It'll be what heaven means to you too. Amen. Hallelujah. Country weird of twilight, shadowed deep, an ending day where night will never be. A city Yeah. 
Don't stop believing the Lord. Continue to pray and seek his face. The Lord hears you. I want to tell you that. The Lord hears you. Even when you say, well, I'm not sure he does. He does. He hears you. The Bible says through and through, he hears those that cry out unto him. Sister Brenda, he hears us. Oh, I thank God for that. Amen. Amen. Children's Church is going to Reverently stand up. Amen. Good to see Sister Perla here. Amen. Team Church. Go ahead and get on. Half the church. Go ahead and get on out of here. <laughs> Newborn Church. No, we're not going there. <laughs> no, we're working on the nurseries. You know, there with me. Like I said, I'm already a month behind, you know, it's only started for a week. Amen. Amen. We got your Bibles with you. Thank you, son. Turn with me to Isaiah chapter 33. Isaiah chapter 33. I do encourage you all, please, invite a friend for next next week. And um, you know, we're gonna like I said, we're gonna have dinner on the ground, but I just I feel God has given us momentum. Sister Judy, I feel God is, you know, we're, we're, we have momentum right now in Him. And I don't want to stop. I want the Lord to be edified all the way through. So please invite somebody and uh, bring some of those good vittles that y'all do. And we'll have a good time in the Lord. Isaiah 33, verse number 5. If you found it, stand up with me once again. Isaiah 33, starting at verse number 5. There's some papers going. If you're there, say amen. 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 The Bible says in Isaiah 33, verse number 5, 
The Lord is exalted, for he dwelleth on high. He hath filled Zion with judgment and righteousness. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. And strength, everybody say strength, of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. Amen. Sister Iris, right now the Lord is just opening this up to me more and more. I'm glad he did. Amen. Go to verse number 20 with me. Look upon Zion, the city of our, what's that word there? Salamides. A song of peace. And you'll see that. That I shall see Jerusalem a quiet habitation. A tabernacle that shall not be taken down. Praise the Lord. Not one of the stakes thereof shall ever be removed. Neither shall any of the cords thereof be broken. But there the glorious Lord will be unto us a place of broad rivers and streams wherein shall go no galley with oars which means no ships neither shall any gallant ship pass thereby for the Lord is our judge the Lord is our lawgiver the Lord is our king he will save us thy tacklings are loose they could not well, not well strengthen their mast. They could not spread the sail. Then is the prey of the great spoil divided. The lame take the prey. Verse 24. And the inhabitant shall not say, I am sick. The people that dwell therein shall be forgiven their iniquities. Praise the Lord of glory. Hallelujah. Verse number 6 uh, in, in chapter 34. Verse number 6, chapter 34. The sword of the Lord filled with blood. It has made fat with fatness and with the blood of the lambs and goats, with the fat of the kidneys of rams. For the Lord hath a sacrifice in Basra and a great slaughter in the land of Idumea. And the unicorns shall come down with them and the bullocks with the bulls. And their land shall be soaked with blood. And their dust made fat with fatness. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance. And the year of recompenses. For the controversy of Zion. Amen. The controversy of Zion. And the streams. Verse 9. Thereof shall be turned into pitch. And the dust thereof into brimstone. And the land thereof shall become burning pitch. It shall not be quenched night nor day. The smoke thereof shall go unto forever. From generation to generation. It shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever. I want you to see there's a contrast between two nations. Two people. Two beliefs. Two kingdoms. And I want to preach to you this morning the controversy of Zion. I believe the Lord's going to help us. I already feel him here right now. Pray with me, dear Father. We love you. We praise you. And we thank you. And I'm asking you once again, Lord, to give us strength. Help this man, dear Father. As I humbly come before you, Lord, I know that the only the anointing destroys the very yoke of bondage. And I'm asking you, Lord, right now to open up the ears and the hearts of the hearers. Lord, help me to utter your words, dear Father, with power and authority. And I know it's nothing of myself. Lord, I lift you up right now. I lift you up, Jesus. My God of glory, we thank you. And in Jesus' name we pray. In the church that say amen. Amen. You may be seated. The controversy of Zion. There's a controversy going on right now with the, the church in the world. There is a confusion going on, Sister Gail, about what is right and what is wrong. There's confusion going on when the world is saying that this is right, and the Lord says it's absolutely wrong. 
There's confusion going on because there's prominent people saying, hey, it's okay. Continue on as you were and just know that the Lord is okay with you even though it contradicts what the Bible says. And I can tell you right now that that's a lie. Did you know that Satan himself comes in as an angel of light? He deceives the very elect. He comes in and says, thus saith the Lord. By far, it's not what thus saith the Lord. It's what thus saith man. Oh, we worship God, but what God are you worshiping? Are you worshiping God with a big G, or are you worshiping God with a little G? Because there are different gods out there. Everybody who says, I worship Jesus, isn't worshiping the same Jesus of the Bible. There are other Jesuses out there. The Bible even says that in the latter times, many will come in my name saying, I am him. I am him, turn not unto him. It's not him. We must understand that in life, we have life. We have life in Christ. In Christ. Life. Zion, we must understand, is the, the spiritual Zion. Now, we know, talking about Jerusalem here, which is the very, you know, the core center of, of, of God's people. This is the promised land, but I'm telling you, the church is a type of spiritual Zion. We must understand that the church itself is also known as the bride of Christ. Can you say amen? Our life, our life in Christ, this life must be a reflection of who he is. This life as the bride of Christ of the church must be a reflection of who Jesus is. What's Jesus? The Jesus of the Bible. Of his holy word. Now I can tell you right now in Revelation chapter 21. Turn with me if you have that if you want to. If not, I want to read it here to you anyway. But I just want you to follow along because I'll give you my notes. So you can say, what did pastor say? I want to give you my notes right now is what it is. Revelation 21, verse number one. And the Bible says, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Praise the Lord. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jeru Jerusalem. Everybody say New Jerusalem. Coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Prepared, everybody say prepared. Prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Verse number four, and God shall, everybody say God shall. God shall, everybody say God shall. God shall wipe away part of the tears. The Bible says all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things, praise God, are passed away. Verse number nine. And there came unto me one of the seven angels which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues and talked with me saying, come hither, come here and I will show thee the bride, the lamb. Wife, I will show you the beautiful bride of Jesus. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great high mountain, in a high mountain, and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem. Everybody say, Holy Jerusalem. Holy Jerusalem. Where is it coming from? Descending out of heaven. From God. I want you to lift your hands right now and give him just a short amount of praise. Can you do that? Oh, he's worthy of it. He's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy of it. The Bible says that the Spirit says come. The Lord says come. The life says come. His bride must remain alive. Do you hear me? His bride must remain alive. His bride, his church must remain alive, shining as the light she is meant to be. We must understand, church, that there's three ways life must remain in the church. Number one, faith. Everybody say faith. Faith. Look at your neighbor and say faith. Oh, where is your faith? 
The Lord has said many times, believe in me. If you believe in the Father, believe in me. Only believe. Oh, ye of little faith. Where is your faith? Where is your faith? I'm talking to the bride of Christ. Man. Faith in him. Not faith in man. Not faith in a denomination. Not faith in a movement. But faith in Jesus Christ. The son of the living God. Not faith in a government. Not faith in a dollar bill. Not faith in a ten dollar bill. Not faith in a twenty dollar bill. Not faith in President Trump. But faith that God. Too many times we look to the left and right. Right. We're looking to the left and right. We're looking, you know, this way, that way, and we fail to look up. We try to do everything on our own, get this ready, that ready, and we're moving as hard as we can, Sister Diana, but yet we fail to look to the heavens where our redemption draweth. Oh, boy, has anybody, anybody ever been so busy that at the end of the day you still didn't get everything done, but you're still dog tired? Come on now, Jay. There it is. I want you to think about that. We get so busy going left and right, this way and that way. But I can tell you right now, the redemption, the peace and the joy comes from knowing, praise the Lord, that our redemption is getting closer and closer and closer. Our redemption draweth nigh. That is the bridegroom. Praise the Lord coming after the bride. Can I preach just a little bit this morning? Can I go ahead and encourage the bride of Christ this morning? I hope I can. You know, love needs to stay in the church as well. To keep the church alive, to keep the bride alive, love must be there. Can you say amen? Love God with everything that you are, your mind, your soul, your strength, everything that you are. But you also need to love your neighbor as you love yourself. Love must remain in the bride of Christ. Oh, am I preaching to anybody now? L-O-V-E, not that ooshy gooshy worldly love. I'm talking about slapped on the cheek, turn the other one to him kind of love. Lord, help us now. There's many people that get slapped one time. It's the last time you're going to slap them. They'll never see him again. They might get slapped one time and then the nose is being pinched. There's no turning on the cheek. There's no love. What are you saying, Pastor? Oh, do me wrong. It's over with. Cut you off. No more ever to be seen again. The bride of Christ must not be there. I believe that love must be a part of the bride of Christ. Can you say amen? Not to mention the true gospel. The true gospel of forgiveness. Not a prosperity gospel. Not a good works gospel. Not a form of rules and religion gospel. But the life of Christ in his church. He came to reconcile you unto him. He paid the price forgiven. And I believe, mama, that the same words must come out of the bride's mouth. I forgive you. I forgive you. I forgive you. Gospel message that saved our lives, Sister Carly, is the same message that must come out of the church. It must, brother. Because if we hold that back, oh Lord, we're missing something. There's a controversy in Zion. There's a controversy in the bride of Christ. There's a controversy of the reflection that we should have, and that is reflection of Jesus Christ. This gospel changes life. Can you say amen? Do you hear me? This gospel changes life. It frees. It saves life. It doesn't bind you back up. Do you hear me? It gives you hope and freedom in Jesus Christ. It doesn't shackle you back down to the world and have you worry about the tomorrow. It frees you and gives you hope in Christ. That is the true gospel. Can you lift up your hands right now? And just praise him. I thank the Lord that I don't have to go outside and worry about a lightning bolt hitting me in the head. Whether or not God will find favor in me. I already know where I stand with him. And that must be in Jesus Christ. Because if I step out of him, I'm in trouble. But if I stay within the bridegroom, I will be remaining the bride. And I know I'm safe in him. Hallelujah. There's freedom in serving God. There's freedom in worshiping the Lord. Sometimes we need to go ahead and receive that freedom. 
We get so dogmatic about what we should do, our responsibilities, and we forget that we're saved and on our way to heaven. Do you hear me? We get so caught up in the what to do's and the what not to do's, we forget to know. Hey, we forget knowing that Christ is our Lord and our Savior. And we're saved and our name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Yeah. Sister Judy, we get so wrapped up in everything around us and responsibility. And we miss the very relationship that God has brought to us through Jesus Christ. What a privilege it is, Sister Martha, to be able to go into the holiness of holies. What a privilege it is to be able to shut out all the darkness of the world and all the troubles and the tribulation and be able just to come into the safest place that's upon this earth right here. And that is to the throne room of a thrice holy God. Too many times we forfeit that privilege. Too many times we forfeit it. But I'm telling you right now, the bride wants to be with his groom. The bride must desire to be with her groom. I can tell you in Revelation 21, we see the controversy of Zion settled within the world and within itself. Brother Waldo, we see a church that is made it unto heaven. We see a new Jerusalem, that holy Zion, the bride coming down. Everybody say coming down from above, out of heaven. Hallelujah. What are you saying? They made it. Praise God. They made it. They overcome. Sister Iris mentioned, I've overcome. I've overcome this far. No reason to turn back. No reason to go back. If I've already had my eyes on Jesus, I might as well go ahead and make it all the way. Praise the Lord. They overcome. Hallelujah. They made it. They made it. The church made it. I believe the true bride of Christ will be without a shadow of doubt an overcomer in this world. Not sitting there compromising what thus saith the Lord, but holding on to the truth, the very truth of this gospel, because I know without a shadow of a doubt, I like to be, I like to have the truth told, told to me. Don't lie to me. Don't tell me that I'm being okay if I'm out there living in sin. Help me now. Don't tell me and sugarcoat my ears and say, no, it's all right. God understands. You're saved by grace. I am saved by grace without a shadow of a doubt. I'm saved by grace in this capacity. My faith in Jesus Christ freed me from sin. Not only has he forgiven me of my sin, praise the Lord, but he's also destroyed the very yoke of bondage that sin has put upon me. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm free in my bride. I'm free in my, my Christ. I'm free in Jesus. Can you say? Amen, church. I want you to understand that you are free in Jesus Christ. The bride of Christ is free, free, free. Hallelujah. We're free in the Lord. Don't tell me any different. Please don't tell me any different. Life prevailed, church. Do you hear me? Life prevailed. The bride made it to her groom. The bride made it to her groom. I remember the preparation of these weddings and Sister Jean and my son Trey. I know Sister Iris remembers too. <laughs> you ever seen the preparation of a wedding and everything that goes into it? Brother, Brother Bubba just lived through it as well right here with this couple. Amen. I'm telling you the preparation. The bride makes herself ready. The bride has some helpers that come around and get everything ready. But it's about the bride. The wedding's about the bride. It's about making it bright. Oh, but the Father, amen, pours in a lot, don't it? The Father pours in a lot. I can tell you right now, the Father has poured out all of heaven for the Lord's bride. I pray you hear me right now. I feel God helping me. I'm telling you that the Lord God of heaven has poured out of heaven everything that it has, Jesus, upon this earth to make his bride ready. Do you hear me, church? To make his bride prepared. Now, we have responsibility. What are you saying? You've got to make yourself ready as well. Amen. There is a responsibility of the bride. First and foremost to keep our eyes on Jesus Christ. And I promise you if you keep your eyes on Jesus Christ everything else in this world will strangely start fading away. It will start to fade away. It becomes secondary to your groom. 
I know this is kind of weird because I'm a dude talking about that, but the reality of it is I'm part of this church. Brother Walter, we're part of the bride of Christ. And a bride must make herself clear. We must understand that church is an overcomer. It's not a byword, but one who says yes. Everybody say yes. A church that says yes. We say yes to Jesus. We say yes to the Holy Ghost. We say yes to God the Father. The church says, yes, Lord, I do and I will. Well, we all got quiet on me on that one. <laughs> Y'all got too quiet on me on that one. Praise the Lord. Come on. Brother Walter, move these altars together right here. So at least I know if y'all want to come at me, you got to get past the altar. Come on now. Brother Cam, that's my hiding place behind those altars right there. That's the only place. The church says, yes, Lord, I do and I will. That's interesting talking about Pam. He asked me a question the other day. We had a privilege, praise the Lord. We went to Golden Corral. Can you say amen? We went to Golden Corral during steak night. Well, I guess at a certain time, there's steak there. Can you believe you spend that amount of money and you get to eat a steak and dessert? And I, It was amazing to be able to enjoy. We don't get to go there too often, but I'm telling you, when we do, boy, we pay for it. Amen. In more than one way. We pay for it. If you don't come out of Golden Corral feeling uncomfortable, it's your fault. That's the bottom line. And I'm not talking about gluttony. Far from that. I wouldn't be preaching up to you if I was. I, I'm not going to tell you what Brother Michelle used to say about gluttony, but I will tell you this right now, that I thank God for blessing me like he did in that capacity. But Cam asked me, he says, Dad, he says, I've noticed something. Why don't people reverence the church like they used to? Why don't people reverence the church, the ministers, the people like they used to? And I told him, I said, you know what I believe it is? That they don't know who the church is anymore. It's been watered down so much that everybody looks like everybody. And I'm not talking about just in dress. I'm talking about an attitude in life as well. Because what's coming out of the mouth means what's right here in the heart as well. And I believe that there's been such a, a message preaching that, hey, God loves you and wants everybody to come. And I believe it. That is absolute truth. Wants everybody to come the way that you are. But listen to me. He doesn't want you to stay that way. Come on. He's come to free you. He's come to make his bride ready. To bring them out from the world. And help them. Now I'm telling you, if it was on my own works and my own ability, I would have been lost a long time ago. If it wasn't for the grace and the mercy of God, oh boy. But I'm telling you, because of who he is, he's allowed me to come this far. He says, so why doesn't the church truly, the church in this day and age, being respected as it's so true? And I'm not saying like, oh, oh, no, I'm talking about people reverencing the house of God. People reverencing those who say, I'm a Christian. As soon as they find out if you're a Christian, the mouth shuts, no more cursing. Mm, that's hard to hear anymore. Amen. They find out you're a Christian, there's more curse words coming out now. Amen. They're trying it now. Amen. They'll start pointing your face and say, hey, look what I hear. You say, well, what's that walking over there? Yeah, all right. Trying to get you to fall. Trying to get you to turn your back on your Christ. No more reverence anymore. And I believe what it is, there's too many people that are watering down this gospel. Because not only must I be the church in here, I also must be the church out there as well. Because I don't change for being the bride of Christ. These walls are not the church. You're the church. You're the bride of Christ. Amen. We don't change from here to there. We're still the bride of Christ. If we're in Walmart, if we're in Hyundai, we're still the bride of Christ no matter where we're at. Do you hear me? And I'm that old thing goes, I hear too many people saying, well, I'd go, I wouldn't, I'd go to church if it wasn't for those hypocrites. I wouldn't be there. I understand what they're saying, but let me tell you this right now. You still go to Walmart, don't you? 
He still go to Handy. He still go to all these other places, all these other people are hypocriting around. Why not go ahead and get together and try to make it right? Can you say amen? I can't get off my notes. I need to come up here. The church says, yes, Lord, I do and I will. Praise God. Sister Gail, when Jesus asked me to marry him, I said, I do. That's right. I will. You're my Lord. Yes, Lord. And as soon as he did, I'm telling you, my hands were in the air. I came into this gospel with my hands in the air praising him. Can you say amen? I came into my love with my hands in the air praising him. I come into the church with my hands in the air praising him. And I promise you this, when the trumpet sounds, you're going to see this man's hands in the air praising the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords because I know I already have victory in him. It hasn't changed. I have victory in my groom. I can trust he'll see me through. Can you lift your hands right now and go ahead and praise him for a little bit? Sin, listen to me, church. Do you love the Lord? I hope you do. Now, somebody, I know some people are going to, I'm going to feel it right here. But I've got a pulpit and altars right here between me and you. If you throw a tomato at me, I will keep it. <laughs> Put it on my sandwich. On my salad. Actually, I need some tomatoes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask you a question. Do you love the Lord? Let me hear you, church. Do you love the Lord? And keep his commandments. Now, I'm not talking about bowing down you into some religious deal there. I'm talking about you loving your bridegroom. And you do what he tells you to do. I'm not talking about some man-made rules and regulations. I'm talking about what thus says the Lord. If you love Jesus, you're going to do what he tells you to do. That's right. Yes, you are. How do we know what he tells us to do? The Holy Ghost. That's right. The Word of God. That's On the inside and out. Praise the Lord. I didn't get that one tomato thrown at me. <laughs> Y'all must be receiving this pretty good because, I'm because I love you. You know that, don't you? I'm not up here trying to say anything. I love you. I want to see you make it to heaven. I want to see all of the bride make it to heaven. You understand that sin was disobedience to the commandment of God. Thou shalt not eat, man eat. Why'd it have to be food? Why'd it couldn't it be, you know, be something like clink, clink? Adam did not clean out the garage. Okay, no problem. Forgive me. But it wasn't that. It was man do not partake of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And I'm telling you right now, man ate. Now the question is, will you? In partaking of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil basically is saying, God, I've got my, my, my own knowledge of what is right and what is wrong. And I'll partake of it every morning on my own. Regardless of what thus saith the Lord, I'm partaking of the tree of the knowledge of the evil every morning. You understand that that partaking of the tree of life, you have that question that you must ask yourself every morning. Every morning. Will I partake of the tree of life and live forever? But man said, no. Nope. I love the taste of the tree of the knowledge of I love the taste. We must understand that Jesus is the tree of life. Offered to all who would receive. Jesus is the bridegroom. We are his bride. Every morning we have that decision we're going to make. Will we partake of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? And go our own way against what thus saith the Lord? Or are we going to partake of the tree of life? Excuse me, we're figuring this out still. I believe today I see some people looking at the tree of life. Will you make up your mind and love Jesus 
or continue to love yourself? Will you make up your mind the controversy must be settled in your heart today? Will you make up your mind to love Jesus, your bridegroom, or continue to love yourself? When you love yourself more than Jesus, self will rule and not the Lord. Self will and has won the controversy. Self has won the controversy. It's going to get better. Hold on. How do you love this morning? How will you follow this morning? Did you know that Eve was deceived? She was deceived. Adam wasn't deceived. Adam chose to partake of the fruit. It was Eve that was deceived. And we know that Eve being just a type of the church, we must be careful, church. Not to be deceived in this last day. We must make sure that as the bride of Christ, we partake of the tree of life, which is the holy word of God, Christ, the word. And make sure that we are in line with what thus saith the Lord. Adam chose self over God. Adam chose his self over God. Cain chose self over God. Cain, really the first murderer. Well, Adam, Adam ate aside a house and home, killed all of humanity. But I'm telling you, Cain was rightfully the word, the first murderer. He chose death over life. That's what Cain did. God showed up and says, where is thy brother Abel? Where is he? I hear him crying. And you know what Cain had the audacity to do? Notice, as soon as life was taken, the Lord showed up. As soon as death. And blood was upon the ground. Who showed up? God showed up. And Cain had the audacity yeah. to look God in the eye and say, Am I my brother's keeper? You are your brother's keeper. You're your sister's keeper as well. Brother Gene, I'm, you know, I'm you're my brother's keeper. I'm part of the same body. I'm going to help you, keep you into this body, not push you away. I am my brother's keeper. And if you've ever pushed anybody out of the church because they didn't quite meet up to your standard, you've done still good blood out there on that ground. I wish I was sitting out there hearing this preach today. I wish I was. But I'm telling you, if you've ever pushed anybody out of the church because they didn't quite act like you, look like you, talk like you, you just shed your blood out there. And I'm telling you right now, I don't want anybody to look like me, dress like me, sound like me. I want them to look like Jesus. I want them to sound. Like Jesus. I want them to live like Jesus. I want them to love like Jesus. That's where I grew. I don't want anybody to come over and say, Well, More Haven Church of God. Well, yeah, we know him. That's Pastor Corey's church. Mm -hmm. That's not my church, Sister Iris. This is God's church. This is his body. And as soon as I get in the way of that, I need to check out myself in the mirror and say, what am I doing getting people to focus upon this man and not focusing upon Christ? And if you've ever been in that condition, you need to go ahead and step back and grab a hold of this Bible and say, wait a minute. Am I being wooed by somebody else? Am I not part of the bride? Is there another lover trying to take me away from Christ? Hear me what I'm telling you now, church. Because there's a lot of lesser lovers trying to take you away from this Christ. And I believe the Holy Ghost is touching your hearts right now. And let every one of us know, look, we still have hope in him. There's many lesser lovers trying to take his bride. His bride is being deceived. 
I thank God for the responsibility as a pastor. I thank God for the calling of the preacher. But I pray that you don't see this man when you see these walls, you see the Christ that I'm preaching about. And I think God's showing you some things right now where people have concentrated more on the man than they have Christ. They're following the Joel Osteens. They're following the Oprah Winfrey's. They're following the T.G. Jakes and they're not following the Christ. They're following some movement and some word and everybody going out there. And they're missing the true Christ of the Bible. They're following the, the new age religion. Say, hey, you have the power within yourself to do whatever you want to do. If it's against the word of God, you do not have the privilege to do whatever you want to do. You say, the Lord has made me free. Yeah, the Lord has made you free to love him with everything that you are. And not be pulled away to some lesser lover's arms. Are we okay still? Yeah. Amen. I want you to love Jesus with everything that you are. The world's heart was on self continuously and not on the Lord. Evil was on every side. His heart was on evil much like today. You know this as well as I do, sister. I can tell you right now that if God was to go ahead and allow this world to continue on much more longer than it, it has been, he owes a big apology to Sodom and Gomorrah, to Jericho. Because we read in the Bible that they have the, 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 the Sodomites were there and you know the homosexual movement was running and I'm telling you I love every homosexual that is on this planet I just don't agree with what they're doing and I don't think it's their choice I think they're deceived by lesser loving and please don't be the world now he's no 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 it's sin just like adultery it's sin just like stealing sin, sin just like murder it's sin. That's what it is. That's how it is. But I'm going to tell you right now that if this goes on much longer, the Lord's going to have to hold them an apology. Because there's people waking up today and they say, you know what? I'm a man. But I feel like a woman. I'm a woman. But I say, oh, and Facebook's going to cut off right there. And that's the last thing they're going to hear me say. But I feel like a man. When people don't even know whether they're a man or a woman anymore, I promise you, the Lord's coming back to get his bride out of this. I promise you, he's coming back to get his bride. He loves the very elect. Yeah. And if the very elect be deceived, I want you to think about this. What does that lead for the ungodly? Amen. The unjust. If the bride, the very elect, those chosen are deceived, what does that lead for those sinners? I promise you there's somebody that has their eyes upon you and want to take you away from Christ. I promise you there is. Come on, brother. And they want to bring you in to oh, yeah. four walls. They want to bring you in unto themselves. And they want you to be taken away from Jesus. And if that's the case, you need to run as fast as you can. And you need to get away from that mess because there's nobody that must come in the way between you and Jesus. 
I read in that Bible when he yeah. said it is finished. I promise you that the holiness of holies, the curtain was ripped wide open. Can you say amen? Oh. Access unto the Father was wide open for everybody to come into the holiness of holies. If you've got a man saying that you've got to do this, that, and the other and get in the way of Jesus Christ, what he has is the needle and thread in his back pocket. And he went ahead and sewed up the curtain and said, now you got to come through me to get to him. I'm telling you, he is an antichrist. He's wooing your heart to get you away from the true Christ. The true Christ. Over the said, come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come unto me. Come unto me. Come unto me. With arms wide open. Come unto me. And he says it is finished. Everything Amen. of the Lord's will was fulfilled on that very day. Yes, Noah, look at this. The Lord was ready to end it all. Hear me, church. Yes, Greed him of the sin, death, murder, hate. That his creation have become. They became it. Do you hear me? They became the hell. Oh they became it. Help me now. But Noah found grace in the eyes of God. Can you say amen? amen? Noah found grace, unmerited favor, life in the eyes of God. He said, Noah, build an ark. Here are the plans. Stick to them and live. He says, here is the blueprint. Stick to it and live. Stick to it and live. If you're not ready in 100 years, you and your family will perish. Your sons will perish. Your wife will perish. Your wife and all, all, all you must understand that, that, that perish, they will all perish. The holy judgment of the Lord will come down. You know what Noah did? He hammered. He cut. He nailed on the ark for 100 years. Do you hear me, church? He nailed. He cut. He, he went ahead and put the boards in place. He kept on for the first year, the second year, the third year. He kept pounding. He kept pounding. He said, boys, grab that board. We need to put it right here. How do you know? That's where the Lord told me to put it. He said, what's going to happen, Daddy? He said, there's something about a rain never experienced before, never felt it before, but it's coming. I sat there and cut the boards, put it together. A hundred years, a hundred and ten years went by, twenty years. Do you know how many people walked by them and said, look at these fools? Sitting there just spitting venom all over them and saying, you're a moron. For believing that you could ever bring revival to more even. You're just out of your other level mind thinking that there's going to be a flood. What are you talking about? This rain stuff. I don't even know what you look at you. Hunt up, you're wasting your time. You're wasting your resources. And I don't know about you, Sister Eyes, but the very first time I see two giraffes coming that way, I would have started paying attention. <laughs> When I seen two zebras come up there and said, hey, where do you want me to go? I would have said, wait a minute, there's something going on with his art business. But I'm telling you, praise the Lord, he overcome. You see, what Noah was doing was getting ready for his rule. Hallelujah. He was getting ready. He was cutting the boards. He was getting everybody in. And he to be getting in. I hope you hear me right now what's going on. I'm telling you, he was hammering. He was bringing everything in. The arrows started coming up. The worms, we wouldn't have any worms. Bubba and I were on there. Guaranteed we would try fishing for the very first time. What have been over with? We wouldn't have had any worms. But I'm telling you, as they started to come in, they, they, the, the 99th year come, all oh, in the 100th year. The Bible says this, that the Lord closed the door of the ark. The very first time that rain came from heaven and hit the ground, everybody's heart just melted and realized that they messed up. Oh, Bishop says that Noah was one of the greatest preachers ever to walk on this earth. How do you know he saved his whole family? Do you hear me? But everybody else that he did not listen to him were damned. There wasn't no middle ground. There wasn't no purgatory. There wasn't no lukewarmness. It was you're in this ark or judgment is coming. You're out. You hear me, church? And if you have anybody preaching to you some other way or bringing you in and saying, well, if you do this, that, and the other, the Lord will save you. I'm telling you, 
is not by works, lest any man should boast. It's by his grace. But I'm telling you right now, you are going to live for God if you are his. And it's not going to be a drudgery. It's going to be a joyous time waiting on your room to come. Oh, there's times if I could flip it some other way right now. There's times where I know Sister Bridget and I would get to have a date night. Hallelujah. It's few and far between, but there's times where, you know, it's like everything lines up like it needs to. And we get to have, I get to take her out to dinner. We get to enjoy some time, you know, to sit there. And there's an anticipation in this man's heart right here. I see him making herself ready. Amen. I see you're getting ready to be a part of the room. And there's an anticipation in this groom's heart, like there's my beautiful wife over there. Praise the Lord. We're gonna go into we're gonna enjoy some Chinese booze and we're gonna roll. We're gonna have a good time out there. Praise the Lord. We'll get back, spend some time together. Hallelujah. There's an anticipation in this man's heart. And I promise you that in this Christ's heart, there is an anticipation waiting for his true bride. And we are getting ourselves ready. I believe he's saying it's going to come a time. Praise the Lord. It's going to come a time. Hallelujah. There's going to come a time. I'm going to be able to have my bride unto myself. I'm telling you every word that was spoken. Spoken to Noah, he he kept going. The bride made herself ready. A hundred years he made himself ready. We must understand the church is the ark of Christ. The gospel of grace and forgiveness are the boards and the nails that is right now holding the church together. It's not the name of the denomination on the outside board of the marquee. Praise God that I'm Pentecostal, but I promise you this, I'm more of a Christian than having a, a name of Pentecostal on me. I believe in God the Father. I believe in God the Son. I believe in God the Holy Ghost. All three of them are one. And I'm telling you, you must live a holy life. You must be filled with this Holy Ghost and baptized with the evidence of speaking in tongues. I believe that all the way through. So what are you saying, you Pentecostal? Yeah, I guess I am. But I'm telling you, before that, I'm a Christian. I'm a child of God. I'm part of the bride of Christ. That is the reflection of what it should be. Don't say, well, you're Baptist. I understand that I get that. I get that. But first and foremost, I am a Christian. I am a child of the King. I am His bride who is soon to come again. Because if you found yourself in that certain section, if you're not careful, then that will bring you right in and start cutting you off and saying, don't you go over there and fellowship with them. I thought it's a holy roller come and help you. Maniacs. You ever heard that before? You people crazy. Don't go over there with them. Don't go over there. Oh, they 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 don't they don't believe it all like you know. Don't you go talk over there. Oh no. You know what Satan's doing? He's wooing the bride of Christ and separating. I believe the full counsel of the Bible. All the way from Genesis to Maps. I don't take anything out. I don't add anything to it. Yeah. I believe it from beginning to end. I believe God created the heavens and the earth. I believe judgment's coming. I believe all those not found in the ark of Christ will be found guilty. We'll have to face him on judgment day. That is the reality of this appointed unto men once to die. And then after that, the judgment. But I want to encourage you in this way. That's not the way the Lord wants it to be. You understand that I want to be closing here shortly. Please bear with me. That the gospel of grace and fellowship are the boards and the nails that is right now holding his church together. Everything else divides. Just as I said, we're living in a world of division and, and subtraction. I want you to bear with me right now because you're going to see it here. As we're living in this world of division and subtraction, race divides us, social status divides us, age divides us, even weight divides us. I'm pleasantly plump. You know, I'm pleasantly plump. I'm a grandfather now. If I get my beard back, it starts coming uh, white. You know, I'll just you know do what I got to do there. You must understand. 
you must understand that I'm not trying to look like anybody else. And I understand the health factor of it. You understand me? I understand, you know, the whole diabetes thing and being healthy, cardiovascular. Hey, I see people run up that bridge trying to run from death. I see them run back down trying to run from death. But statistically speaking, 10 out of people, 10 out of 10 people still die no matter how far you run. And I understand the health aspect of it. I don't want to die at an early age. But with that being said, I don't have to look like Fabio. I don't have to look like some crazy, you know, you could look like this woman right here. She's 21 years old, hasn't had a blemish, hasn't had kids, hasn't had worked in life. And look, if you don't look like her, you don't look right. Are you kidding me? There's people that chase that all day long. I want to look like that. Well, maybe you did look like that 20, 30 years ago, but guess what? Life has changed. Things have changed. Be blessed for who you are. Lift up your hands and live right and say, thank God for my family and the life you have given me. See, they wooed you over. So praise the Lord, that little Bonnie crying. Amen. Hallelujah. Some people don't like to hear a baby cry. I, you know, it, it aggravates every once in a while, but understand what I'm telling you. I love to hear a baby cry. Because if I hear a baby cry, I know the baby's breathing. Hallelujah. The baby's breathing. As you might not be uncomfortable, but I know this to be true. The baby's okay. If I can hear the baby, everything's all right with Papa. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hey, that's why the Lord tells us to cry out unto him. I believe we could cry out a little bit unto God right now. I believe we can go ahead and just let it come on out. Praise the Lord. Go ahead and cry out unto him. That's what he wants us to do. And cry out unto him. Praise the Lord. Okay, well, let's see. Real quick here. Hey, 10 people. The bottom, the bottom line, 10 out of people, 10 out of people die. No one gets to, to, to out of this world alive. <laughs> Unless you're Enoch and Elijah or the bride of Christ. The bottom line, nobody gets out of this world alive unless your name was Enoch, Elijah, or you're a part of the body of Christ. You never change. Oh, look at it. That's the only way. That's the only way. The controversy must be settled now. Are we the bride of Christ? Or are we a shell of religion? Right. Are we the bride of Christ or are we a shell of religion? Only two people know for sure. And this is it. Let me tell you who they are. Two people know. You and your groom. Because I can see you from the outside and say, yeah, you look pretty good. That looks like a Christian. But the inside is something. Or I can look at some people from the outside and say, well, I'm not sure about them. But the Lord says they're part of my bride. They're just struggling a little bit right now. I'm wooing them back unto me. There's only two people know that if you're a part, not, not even packed, sermon of spirits, the Holy Ghost will let somebody know if you're struggling or dealing with some things. But I'm telling you right now, only two people truly know whether or not you're ready. That's you, and that's Jesus. That's right. Nobody else can judge you in that way. Nobody else can point a finger. Nobody else can say, nope, not you. Mm -mm. It's only you, and that's Jesus. Yeah. Y'all receive that right now? Amen. Please take that. Please take that right now. You know that the Lord is preparing a place for his bride? Do you hear me, church? Did you know that the Lord is preparing a place for his bride? And you say amen. In John 14, 1 through 6, he says, well, don't let your heart be troubled. Don't you worry about it. I've got you. I'm coming back for you. 
And I'm going to show you how to get there. He lets oh, you yeah. know. He says, Lord, well, how, how, how do we do it? He says, hey, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I'm going to show you how to get there. You know Jesus loves you. The bride, the bride must love the, the groom, but the groom loves his yeah. bride. You don't want to see him hurt, struggling, and going through what you're going through. But I promise you, as Sister Iris brought out, that there are some times we've got to go through some things. But it's just drawing us closer unto him. There are some valleys to walk through. There are some hills we have to climb. But it's just a matter of time before we're in the arms of Jesus Christ. What way? How do we get there? Don't let your heart be troubled. I need for you to believe. You need to believe. Look at your neighbor and say, I believe. I hope you do. I believe. And that's half the battle. Because you know what kept Cain or uh, Israel out of the promised land? What was it? It was Sister Judy, my Bible scholar. It was unbelief. If you look at your neighbor and say, I believe, then you're going to start seeing a chain reaction happen. Because you're going to start relying more on Christ than everything else around you. You're going to start relying on your bridegroom more than anything or anybody else around you. You're even going to get to the point where you're going to start relying on his understanding more than your own understanding. You're going to start relying on Jesus more than anything else. You also need to know that he's preparing a place for who? Who is he preparing a place for? The bride. Sister Gina, can you please come up here? Who is he preparing a, a place for? For his bride. His bride. How will we get there? We understand that he will come again and receive you unto himself, his bride unto himself. What's the direction? How do we get there? The Bible says he is the way, the truth, and the life. Oh, his bride is the way, the truth, and the life. The controversy has been settled. The bridegroom says this is the way it must be. The bride must lift up her hands in total surrender and said, Lord, I need your grace and your mercy to help me get there. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus told his bride that you want to come unto me? I want to show you how to get there. I want to show you how to get there. You know, right now, I want to make sure the Holy Ghost closes His, His Word out. And closes it out just as He would have it to do. I wrote down a very familiar parable here. And it's basically bringing 10 people in front of you. Five are a perfect reflection of Jesus. And five are a perfect reflection of man. Five were wise. And five were unwise. I'm going to set 10 people in front of you right here and you can go ahead and grab what category you're in there. I think I saw, I feel the Lord give me the liberty to do that, okay? Then shall the kingdom of heaven be alike unto 10 virgins. Everybody say 10 virgins. Which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five of them were foolish. They were foolish. What happened? They got deceived. They got pulled away. They started letting man lead them. They started letting their own way of thinking lead them. Old sinful nature came back to life. And guess what? They become foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps 
and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil. Can you say amen? The wise took oil, amen, in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, guess what? He's tarrying right now. He's waiting. He's waiting right now on his bride. Look what it says here. As the bridegroom tarried, while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a great cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Sister Iris, the bridegroom's here. And please don't take this the wrong way. But some of us will need to get off the pew to go meet him. Some of us will get off the pew to go to our house, sit down in front of the TV. But some of us won't even get up and go meet him. Some of us will get up, go to our vehicle, go to work every morning. Come back to church on Sunday, sit down in the pew, get back up, wake up, go to work, come back home, sit on the pew. But they won't get up and meet him. The Bible says that at midnight there was a great cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. The commandment, go ye out to meet him. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. Look, notice, all the virgins. Ten virgins. There was ten people. Ten virgins, ten young maids were there. But something happened. That's right. She's okay. I'm glad to hear her cry. And all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish saith unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps have gone out. Basically what they're saying is, We ran out of oil. They're saying right here, Brother Tyler, I had the oil once. It was there, but I ran out. There was at one point in time I had the love and the desire and the direction for my bridegroom. But it's gone out. It's gone out. But the wise answer saying, not so. Look at what happened saying, Not lest there be enough for you, us and you, but go ye out rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready, everybody say ready, went in with him to the marriage. Did it say those that were sort of ready? Those that were halfway ready. No, it says those that have already. Those that have made themselves ready. Went in, everybody say went in with him. Now I believe the Holy Ghost is putting you right now in what position you are. Some of you say, well, you know, I don't do things so bad. You know, I, I know I'm still kind of in and out. I'm all right. I'm still virgin, right? I'm still okay. Yeah, that very well could be the place. But what I'm telling you is there was five that were wise and five were foolish. Something happened. They stopped preparing for the bridegroom. Mama, they stopped getting ready for the bridegroom. And I believe they were concentrating more on self. Concentrating more on other things. They were concentrating more on their way than his way. Check this out. Guilty, guilty, guilty. I have done that a time or two or three. There's times where the pressures in life, the responsibility of being a dad, being a father, being a husband, the times where I went ahead and jumped up 
and said, hey, I'm going to go do my own thing. Not as far as leaving God, but I've got to go. I've got to work. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. I don't have time right now to really spend my time in prayer. I've got to get up and go what i got to do. I've got to provide. i got to do what I have to do. You know what was happening? I wasn't preparing for the bridegroom. Look at what he says right here. Afterward came also the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, everybody stand with me right now. He gave him four words. I know you not. That baby's all right. I know you not. And then he gives us a commandment in verse number 13. Watch therefore, for ye shall neither know the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. He's saying, watch thereof, because you don't know the day your bridegroom's coming. What I can tell you is I put my finger in the spiritual air. I know it's getting close. I know it's getting close. I was concerned about that. I didn't know you. There's a, a Jewish idiom dealing with knowing kind of, we got some older people here in a, in a, in a, in a sexual kind of way, a knowing, a consummation of the marriage. But that's not what this, this word means. That's not what it means. To know means I don't see you anymore. I don't see you anymore. The, the light's not shining like it was. And that makes sense because the oil has gone out. The light isn't shining. So I don't see you anymore. He wasn't saying I never knew you because he did know them. At one point in time, they were all virgins. But he's saying, I don't see you anymore. I would go to meet with you, but you weren't there. I want you to come and visit with me, but you wouldn't come. I want you to sit down with me and partake of the bread of life, but you never sat down long enough for me to pour the oil back into you so your light can shine. And when the bridegroom comes back for his bride, you're going to see the light shining bright, so bright, because we're going to be ready. Check this out. Everybody say, thank you, Jesus. Because there's oil right up here at these altars. Say, thank you, Jesus. The bridegroom has given you an opportunity to get ready right now. I hope you hear me right now. Jesus has given you time to get ready right now. You say, well, my hair is not ready. He's giving you time to get ready. My dress isn't fitting right. He's giving you time to get ready. Hold up. I don't know what I'm going to say. I don't have my wedding vows. What am I going to tell him? Come right here and talk to him. And he'll help you get those right as well. He'll help you what to say. He say, I don't know what I'm going to say. Come up here. He'll help you get ready. Pray with me, dear Father. We love you. We praise you. And we thank you once again. For your grace and your mercy. My Lord, I'm asking you once again to deal with the hearts and the minds of every individual here. Lord, I, I 